I present to you my theme, Theme Night. This is a theme I made, but my goal wasn't to simply create a theme I could call my own. Instead, I wanted to establish a meaningful color convention, where each color is chosen with intent, rather than being chosen arbitrarily. So for example, look at this pink color. What is this pink for? Well, global variables. So since we're exporting this variable, the color is pink. Now what about this purple? Well, that is for all reserved keywords. So export, type, import, etc. Then what about this orange? Well, that is for functions. So everything that you see that is orange is a function. So as we can see, this is a function, this is a function, this is a function. Now, unfortunately, the editors aren't perfect. Neither Webstorm, which is the one I'm using right now, or VS Code have complete accuracy on the tokens. For example, match is a function yet it shows as a global variable and reduce is also a function yet it has no color so these are special cases where for some reason it fails but this ultimately depends on the editor vs code has its problems in some specific cases just as webstorm does but obviously generally speaking the tokens are mostly accurate now what about this green color that you see here well that is for the arguments of a function so as we can see, schema is an argument, options is an argument, and so they are green. Now we're returning a function, so self is green, since this is an argument of the function, and same with these ones, excluded, satisfied, and item. All of them are arguments. So it's easy to set apart arguments of functions with locally scoped variables. So as you can see, locally scoped variables are of color white. Now, what about this color right here, which is not white, but a grayish tone? Well, this is for modules that you import like this. What about this blue color here for properties that you define in an object? And what about this yellow color? Well, that is for classes. If I come here, as you can see, this is a class and this one has a property. So as you can see, the properties are blue. Now, what about this lighter blue color? Well, that is for types. So interfaces and type aliases use this blue color. Now, this yellow color isn't used solely for classes. As you can see, it is used for symbols, string, etc. So this is for the primitive data types in TypeScript. As you can see, number is also yellow. So everything has a reason. I can take a look at this code and immediately identify what is a function, which are the arguments, which are the type aliases, which in turn reduce my cognitive overhead. I don't need to manually identify what is each thing, rather I've grown accustomed to this theme, so I can now subconsciously identify every single token. So now I've moved over to VS Code, and as you can see, it is pretty much the same. Now VS Code can, for some reason, better identify the functions, so reduce is now orange, but global variables aren't the best. As you can see, console is global, but hello isn't treated as one, so it is white. Now notice this true here. As you can see, it is yellow, but if I come back to Webstorm, it is purple. I prefer the purple because true is a reserved keyword. So these are just limitations of the editors. They treat the tokens differently. Nothing we can do about that. Now, how can you install these themes? Well, for VS Code, all you need to do is come here over to extensions and search or theme night. And it's this one, no picture by me. And you can install it and set it as your theme and you're good to go. Now for Webstorm, it isn't as straightforward. Why? Because I didn't really take the time to sit down and try to build and publish the theme in the marketplace of JetBrains. Because it is way more cumbersome. It isn't as straightforward as VS Code. Because in VS Code, the themes are defined in a JSON file. And that's all you need. But in Webstorm, since it's in Java, you do not provide a JSON file. 
you need to define the theme using their configuration, and then you need to build the theme with Gradle. So if you want to use this theme in a JetBrains editor, all you need to do is come here over to my repository, JetBrains Theme Night Theme, and then here in the readme, I have some instructions. So you need Java version 17, and all you need to do is say Gradle W build, and it will be outputted over to build slash distributions. And then to install it, you need to go to settings, then preferences, then plugins, click the gear icon, select install plugin from disk, and then you navigate over to the build slash distribution directory of the build that you just made. And then you select the zip file and you hit OK and restart your IDE and you should be good to go. So to recap, you come here, go to plugins, and then here in this gear icon, you say install plugin from disk, you navigate to the distribution directory, and then you click on the theme and you're good to go. Now, if you want to use this theme, there is one thing that I recommend you to do, and this is only for JetBrains IDEs. You need to open up settings, go over to editor, then go over to color scheme, and then come here to general. And then here, scroll down for this error property here that is within errors and warnings and change this from a bordered to a dotted line. So that errors are shown as dotted lines. So underlined with a dotted line rather than a rectangle. I'm lazy and I always forget to update that property in the source code. Maybe if I get to it one day, you won't have to do this. Now, what about my extensions? Well, I like to keep my setup as minimal as possible. So for that, all I use is add some material icons to have these nice icons. And then I believe somewhere here within the settings of Atom material icons, I disable the UI icons, the PSI icons, and the hollow folders. And that's it. As for VS Code, I use material icons, I believe. I don't have it installed, but this is the one I use. Now, as for the font, I use Cascadia code, which is the Microsoft one. And that's about it. So as you can see, I'm not heavy on extensions. I just need an icon theme and my theme and I'm good to go. Partly because I like to reformat my computers every month. So it is very tedious to have to do a very extensive setup that frequently. Anyway, this wraps up the video. If you want to learn about coding, discuss about different concepts and whatnot, make sure to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. See ya.